So a lot of you guys really liked my Kamen Rider reaction that I did to the trailer. Um, fortunately, <laughs> you can't exactly react to the full episode, so I thought I'm going to review the episode by talking about it. I did a very similar thing two years ago, um, where I talked about Zio and about, what, three episodes, I believe? Oh my god, that was a lot of work, by the way, and this is gonna be a lot of work, too. So, I, <laughs> I got all my information down. There's a lot of information. I tried to really, really dig deep into a lot of the characters after I started looking at everything. I also rewatched the episode, too, so I can write down, like, how things go for the whole entire episode. And, oh my god, it definitely helped me understand it a lot more better than the first time I watched it. I watched it for the first time, I was like, huh, okay. There was definitely a lot of similarities I can notice between, like, a lot of different shows. And, like, there, there's similarities. I'm sure you guys can tell if you guys have watched these shows. <laughs> I looked into the characters. There's a lot of really good character backgrounds for this. And, like, I didn't know anything really about the characters from when I looked at it the first time. So I dug deep for you guys and I'm sure a lot of you guys like don't exactly know like maybe what the characters like the meeting for the characters are. Um so I dug a little deep. So um we're going to talk about the cast. I'm only gonna really talk about the cast for episode one and a little bit of episode two for from the trailer because there is a little bit of the continuing from it, but I'm only gonna really talk about the main characters in this episode. <laughs> uh, so, as you know, we have our main characters. So our first one is Tsuchiro Naito, who is playing Toma. Nice to meet you, Toma. Um, Toma Kamiyama. <laughs> Kamiyama. Um, if I could recommend one thing that he's ever been in, um, I did look at to see if he's been in anything that I've seen in the past. And yes, he was. And I choose one of this, and I totally recommend you guys can go watch it. It's called Kiss Me at the Stroke of Midnight. If you guys don't know, one of the guys from Generations is actually in it. And it's so good. I love it. It's a 2019 film. If you guys have not watched it, be sure to go watch it. Toma is a novelist as well as he owns a bookstore. Like, the dude out of the bookstore. That's cool. That is cool. So, we also get to see another character called Rintaro Shindo. Um, so, like, we don't really find out his name in this one, but if you look it up, his name shows up. <laughs> so, um, he is played by Takaya Yamaguchi. And, like, after watching this, I think I definitely fell in love with his acting. He He's really good. And we also have Meisudo, who is played by... Asuka Kawazu. Hopefully I'm saying it right, please. Um, but she is Tomoya's um, editor. As you guys don't know, there's always an editor. If you write novels, you have your manuscripts and you give it to your editor. Basically, it's like that. Um, they do talk about manuscripts. So if some of you guys that don't know what manuscripts are, basically, it's just what you see a lot of writers use. A lot of different manuscripts are different, depending on the country. But yeah, so basically... It's like if you watch Roots Basket, then it's like that. And then we have one real main villain for this. We do have our villains, but our main monster. I'm just going to call you monster because we have our villains. But we have our main monster for this episode, which is Gollum uh, <laughs> Megiddo. I'm like, make sure I'm trying to sp say things right. Um, but basically, there's a lot of really similarities with this character for sure especially with how our villains are, but I will get more into depth with their characters a little bit as we go on. Um, but I do have their information, so I'll probably just tell you guys. <laughs> um, but basically, he was created from the Alter Ride book, which is the books that they have, which you guys will obviously have seen. Um, Tenseko Golem Alter book. Hopefully I said it right. I'm probably pronouncing things wrong, but you know, at least I'm trying. Um, but basically, that was our really main characters for this episode and the whole entire rest of the series. We do find out more with more Kamen Riders in the next few episodes, I'm sure. So as you guys know, our narrator is Tassel. Um, so basically he says this. Bonne lecture. Lecture? Lecture. Bonne lecture. Hopefully I said it right. I don't speak French or whatever. Um, he says, 
my friends. My name is Tassel. Also, if you guys want to know a little bit of me there, I'll teach you a tiny bit. Um, so he says, Bokuwa, his name, his, so his name would be Bokuwa Tassel. And so it's like, you could say Bokuwa Queen or Bokuwa, your whatever your name is. So that's a little Japanese there for you guys. Um, this is a bit sudden, but books are quite the novel thing, aren't they? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Absolutely everything can be found in books. That is very true. Like unknown knowledge of experiences. Once upon a time. Oh, I see. We're, we're starting how this is. Okay, okay, okay. I see. I see how we're going. This world we live in was created from an extraordinary book, which we do hear a lot more later on in the whole entire series, as well as the episode two. Um, but that book is a source of myth, stories, living creatures so those two will you will see a little bit more about me talk about those a little bit with our villains so as well as specific techniques and more as well as containing all of human history yep books have history duh <laughs> swordman chosen by the second which is also known as holy blade which we do see a lot um have been keeping the peace by protecting the book but one day some bad people who wanted to snatch it away <laughs> appeared, and the book was split and shattered and scattered. Shattered, scattered, you know. Well, they, I guess it's the same thing. Shattered is breaking it. Scattered is going everywhere. That actually makes sense, though. When Once it breaks, it scatters on the floor. Or it scatters wherever it is. Oh, I just made something like <laughs> The battle between the two sides has continued for countless years. And they fight to this day. Oh, uh -huh. so it means that basically everything has not stopped. It's been continuing for the past few years and ever since it started. Okay, okay, okay. But shall we get into the beginning? Oh my god, let me make sure that my characters are just ready just in case because I know I'm going to be talking about that too. Uh, so as a child, he, aka Toma, um, was caught between Sword of Logos and Megado. As you know, so Sword of Logos is one and Megado is the others. So our villains are Megado and our swords are our heroes. So however, a girl fell into Earth, aka the girl we don't really, really physically find out her name, but I did find out her name. Her name is Luna. Um, <laughs> great to see you, Luna. <laughs> um, so he did try to save her. I am still talking about Toma here. Um, Toma did try to save her, but unfortunately, the hand. <laughs> I don't know that I would have said. Um, but then a mysterious person came out, and he's more known as the previous rider Saber. Um, but he is also actually a member of Logo, Comrade Saber, aka Holy Blade, <laughs> also known as previous Flames Swordman. As you can tell, there's swords involved. There's swordmen. Um, Saving Toma, he passed on his Blade Dragon Wonder Ride Book, which is that little book that we find out that he has in his hand all this time. He's like, what is this? Um, it's a book. Um, but it is the same book that we see later on in the episode that he uses. Drenchy. So, basically, I am going to talk about a little bit more of the characters because I'm sure a lot of people are a little bit confused with logos. Um... Because we don't hear a lot about logos in particular, so I did look into it for you guys. <laughs> um, so previous swordman is known as um, Sendai no Hono no Kenshi. Um, that's in Japanese. If you guys want to know how, how to pronounce that, and sort of logos is Soto Obu Dogusu. Hopefully, this is right. <laughs> um, so basically, sort of logos is a mysterious organization formed by a secret sect. Of knights so you know sort of men, knights basically um that are sworn to protect the book at all cost um the book is basically called the book of ancients so you know it holds all ancient mysteries and everything <laughs> let's call, call it the sword of agents um or the book of agents um but basically it helps keep peace with the world i don't think it's still peaceful if you're still in war <laughs> um but each one of these members' assortments have a specific element. If you do see that Toma does have fire, and then we do find out later on that there is another 
and there's more too in the future too so but we find out that previous warrior previous swordsman who was Conrad saber had fire as an element um okay so the founder is sophia who we do find out in episode two um we get to see a little bit of her but that is sophia who is the leader i'm guessing i'm just i'm just saying she's the leader because um she is the founder um and then we do find out that Rintaro, <laughs> Rintaro Shindo is also a member. He has Swordsman of Water, which is why he's blue. Get it? Um, which is known as Mizuno Kenshi. Also known as Comrade Blade. Bang. <laughs> and then we do find out that there is another one that we find out later on. There is a few more, but I believe he will probably be the third one that we could possibly see next after we get to know these two um so the third one is who i'm thinking might be the next one is espada hopefully i'm saying that right basically he's the thunder like you can see that a lot of them have a lot of different specific elements there's fire water there's ground earth basically so basically after all that happens and he after he met with our previous comrade saber who gave him the book um we find out that Tomoe wakes up from his dream and he wonders why the book is still in his hand as you guys can tell um and he wonders man it's the same dream again why do i have this i think i'm forgetting something important something i must do we move on to meeting megado hello megado how are you uh, the first one that we meet is caliber um, who is known as Comrade Caliper. I have his information right here for you guys. Um, so basically, this is the one person that really shook me the most. I didn't even know at this point. I was like, what? What's going on? Um, so basically, Comrade Caliper was actually one of the previous members for Logo, which is crazy to say that. And he's also friends with Rogami, um, who is his best friend. However, he defected to the Megado and tried to take the Book of Ancients for himself. Um, we don't really find out a lot of history with Ro Okayami. All I know is that he was com he's Comrade Buster, also known as Swordsman of Land. He's also a member of Logos. So we don't find out much about him. I don't know when we'll really find out more information about him or when he'll show up. Calibur says this to Satorius, the book saying, allow me to open the first page. We go back to Toma, who then we meet up with Mei. Hello Mei, how are you? Um, but basically the book that he, that he was reading to the kids or they were imagining in the world was Ali and Baba and the 40 Thieves. Um, before we really heard more about our another main character, Mei Sudo. Um, she's crazy because she's a crazy editor and you know editors help. They can be crazy when it comes to due dates of manuscripts um uh, basically she's telling toma that she needs next month's manuscript and you know that's really important um there's always a due date for that and after all that goes down he closes the shop and he goes to make his fault he goes to fulfill his promise that he that he would keep and after he's leaving we see rintaro how are you um basically like i said he is comrade blade swordsman of water um his book is Lion Seki, which is, will make sense to the ending. Then we meet up again with another one of our villains called uh, Vajaru, um, but legend is just the meaning for him. So then we meet up with the villain for this episode. Um, he is the one that comes out of our book. His name is Gala Megado. Like I said, he is from the book is more associated with because he has a special associates each one of them does have a certain specific power i guess you could say i'm just gonna say powers um but his is more with legendary creatures so i'm guessing whatever that book has to do is whatever his power is that he can do that with which is why the guy with hands shows up but then after all that happens we meet rota who's the little cute kid um, it's his birthday. Happy birthday, dude. Happy guys birthday, there. And I guess his, I guess you could say his parents did 
probably tell Toma to pick out a book for him. It does seem like that because I don't think it was actually Rota who gave him the promise, but more maybe the parents because they do own a crepe shop. Um, so they're probably constantly busy and they don't exactly have a lot of time to go out and get something for him if they're constantly like really busy. Um, crepes do sound good by the way. <laughs> but basically he chose a book for him to make sense because he is a novelist so he probably has a really good mindset of tons of books that kids would like. But he chooses Sans Family which is Nobody's Boy by Hector Mellot. Hopefully I'm saying that right. <laughs> Megado creates a altar book, which is why we see that part of the city get with the book. <laughs> and then we do see a little bit that there are these hands um, with books underneath, which is probably why the book suddenly shows up because they're writing a new chapter or they're writing a new book or writing a new story. Um, and whatever happens there, it's just what's writing in that book. I'm not exactly sure with that. They don't really go into a lot of depth with what the hands are truly for. I'm still kind of a little bit confused with that part, so it's the best that I can think of at least. But after being split with his family, he tells Rota to stay calm and do not cry. You are a man. Do not cry. And he goes to Mei, who is literally fangirling and taking pictures so much. Me. Me, girl. And then... We hear a explosion happen, and we see Gollum. Great to see you again. For what? The third time already? We also see that he's holding a what looks like to be a white book, but then it does turn into a more silverish and black type of book after what happened. Um, see hands later, though. Get it? Hands. Basically, we do see this one part before we continue with the story. It said... Brave Dragon, appearing when the pages of this book are flipped. The name of the swordsman with the second, with the sacred destiny is... Da -da -da -da. We don't really find out more after that. We do find out another thing, but after the similar occurrence happened from his dream to what is currently happening with him and May, clicks. So basically, we are a little bit caught up to where Toma and Gollum are right now. Oh, great. We get to see Gollum again. How are you? Basically, Toma sees Gollum and he tells him this. Stop and bring everyone and the city back to our world. But unfortunately, he can't do that. Gollum can't. He doesn't want to. To complete whatever the book is, um, whatever the book is supposed to be completing. We don't exactly really physically physically know what the book is trying to complete, to be honest. Trying to destroy worlds, I guess. Tells Toma that it shall emerge the world with envision. And then, you know, they fight. Try to get the book out of his hands. Yada yada yada. <laughs> and before he gets crushed. We're only halfway through this and he gets crushed. Wow. That was quick. That's when we actually see Rintero pop up again. How are you, Rintero? Great to see you again. Um, after coming out of his book, seeing power suddenly come out of Toma's hand. Like, what, what, you were just crushing, now you have some power coming out of you? Okay, I see where we're going, I guess. And realizing that the book is in Toma's hands. But mostly the book that's in Toma's hand is called a Wonder Ride book, which is all the books that they have in their hands. Basically, they want to ride both. Then a dragon appears. A fiery dr flaming dragon appears. Revealing the sword. If you do kind of see the similarities, isn't that the same exact sword that you saw in the beginning? I think so. But it is. After he touches it. <sighs> he says. I don't think so. The ending to the story is mine to the side. Bam! He transforms. Cool transformation, by the way, boy. Um, basically he's a Reckon, uh, Recky Volume 1 transformation, which is more known for raging fire. As you can tell, fire go raging everywhere. And then we see Red Dragon again. Wow, wow, second time already in a row. And it says this, there once was a mist mythical creature with the ability to obliterate everything. Does that kind of ring a bell for you? Get it? Dragon? Obliterate everything. 
fire. <laughs> a few jumps later, Gollum opens the ultra red book, flipping the pages, which goes from the desert to the sword, back to the world again. Wow, we're going through a lot of worlds, Lizzie. Um, craziness, I'm sorry. After hitting him, which leads to Gollum growing big, which really is shocking. You know what that kind of reminds me of? Super Santa right there. What's going on here? <laughs> I thought this common right. I guess it, I guess we're super sent idea. But then leading Toma to say this saying this to Gulp. This isn't right. Yeah, it really isn't right. It's never right like this. No 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 monster should be going big, huh, Toma? Um, I agree with you. It ain't super sentai. But oh well. <laughs> Toma says this to Gollum. Like I said, the ending to the story is mine to decide. And then you see Toma uses Reading Finish slash Volume 1, Flaming Cross slash, um, to destroy Gollum. And you know, he's bye-bye now. Well, Sartorius says this. Wow, Sartorius, you've been quiet. You, you hardly said anything this whole entire episode. You quiet. What's going on? He says this. Another book nears its complete completion. Wow, um, are you sure it was complete? Because it did not look complete to me. It only looks like one page is being written. Then Caliber says this. It seems the lost sword of flames has reappeared. Yeah, no kidding. The other swordsmen will now surely make their move. Yeah, I think so. Episode 2. Trailer. Then we see May gets her manuscripts. She wanted her manuscripts in the first place, so she got them. And then also realizes... Those pictures she took are gone. Sorry, girl. I know how that feels. Pictures be gone. And then, all of a sudden, we see Rintaro track down Toma at his bookstore. And ask him to hand over the driver and sword, aka the belt. Um, do you realize what you're writing? <laughs> it's not normal to just walk into a bookstore Riding a lion. <laughs> huh? Huh? But that smile, though. <laughs> uh, Toma then yells, Who are you? Oh, don't worry, Toma. It's just, it's, it's just Rintero. Nothing to be scared of. He, he's just Rintero. Just coming in on a lion. Nothing special. But basically, that is the end of what the story goes. But then we do get a narration at the end. I thought I'd get into more depth because I did mention with Caliber that he has a special ability. Um, so each one of them does have an actual special ability based on whatever book is going on or whatever or whatever they create. So another one we meet is who plays Storius is Robin Freya. Freya. <laughs> um, but basically, his name is more words for stories. If you could say storious is what sounds like kind of like stories. So stories is just what it is. Um, um, he has stories and fairy tales. Get it? Stories? Eh. Stories and fairy tales, boy. It's in your name. Um, then we have Miguel. I'm just going to say Miguel. Um, Regidu. I'm going to also name you like that, too. Um, as Tairu Takano who has a play word for legend. Get it? Like, yell kind of legend a little bit. It's there, but not fully there in my mind. <laughs> but basically, his associate is legendary creatures, which makes sense for his name, to be honest. Then we have Zeus. Does it kind of ring a bell to you? <laughs> um, his, the character played by Zeus is Koji Saikawa. Um, the name also word for Zoo. Zeus? Zoo. It's in your name. Special abilities? Regular animals. Get it? A zoo? You gotta have your animals. Bingo. But basically that is a little bit more depth into those characters and why maybe in the future that we could see more related to them. Um, but here is what he says. A section of the city suddenly disappeared. And was moved to another world. That certainly was an unexpected event. However, Toma, who was caught up in the incident, 
transformed and returned the city to normal. That is what they call fate. Are you sure? Are you sure this is called fate? But who is the young man riding a lion? I wonder. It's Rentaro. Not nothing to be worried about. He's just riding a lion. Let's know where I'm up, I guess. But that is currently the whole entire review of episode one. We do, I guess, figure out more about more about logos in episode two. But I did give you guys a tiny bit more of information about logos since we don't hear much about really between the two. We do hear a lot about Megado, but we don't hear a lot about logos. So I thought I'd dig in a little bit for you guys. Actually talk about the characters in particular and what is really similar to the books or whatever is going on. Um, or just to give you information about those who could be possibly confused about those characters. Um, it was it was a very long writing process for me. I was like, oh my god, this is all oh, insane. It's going nuts. I spent probably maybe three hours or two hours really working on it for you guys. Um, so I'm finally filming it. But if you guys like this type of thing where I kind of really dig deep with the characters or kind of figure out how the story is kind of related to the characters in particular. So yeah, um, hope you guys liked me reviewing episode one for you guys. Um, I'm excited for episode two. Um, the ending though, like, does anybody realize how similar this is to Super Sentai? Because the ending is them dancing. That's what Super Sentai people do. But the dance does look fun, and I hope maybe someone will reveal, like, the full type of thing, because I only saw, like, bits and parts of it, because I would love to learn it, to be honest, and maybe do a, a little cover for you guys if you guys are interested in that. So definitely let me know. Leave down below if there's any other series you guys want me to review for you guys one episode or so. I don't mind doing season two right now. Do let me know if there's any other series you guys want me to review and I will do that for you guys. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. <laughs> a little season two I guess. Um I haven't done it in over two years so I'm still a little bit rusty. But I hope you guys like this. Be sure to like and subscribe to my channel for more videos like these and I'll leave my slash me down below for you guys and go click it and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.